Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Friday, January the 14th, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God. And as we do, picking up here in the Beatitudes and looking to our example, the Lord Jesus Christ, as he calls us to these types of realities and mentalities uh, and our our spiritual walk and, and how that applies into our lives. And as we picked up there, we've already done seen that he says, man, blessed are ye, blessed are ye, blessed are ye, uh, and blessed are ye. Four times already, he's talked about how we can be happy, uh, how we can have a full and satisfied life. And, uh, and as we pick up here in verse six, he says these words, blessed are are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, or they shall be satisfied. And so often we are cheating ourselves and we're starving to death and we feel like we're just parched in a dry land because we're not going to the fountainhead of life. And um, and as the Bible uh, uh, calls us to, uh, to know why we have been created and to what purpose uh, God it, uh, seeks to fill our lives and how that's going to play out for all of eternity. But in Isaiah chapter 51, I mean 55, verse 1, the Bible says these words, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money. Come ye, buy ye, and eat, and come buy the wine and the milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and you labor for that which satisfieth not? He says, why are you working yourselves to death and coming up empty every time? Can't you see that you're laboring in this world and all that you're spending all of those, all of those uh, physical dollars on uh, is not really satisfying the deepest longings of your soul? You're walking around empty even though you may have uh, things to hold on to. Uh, they're, they're slipping through your hands. They do not satisfy. And so he asked the question, he says, why do you labor for that which is uh, which, which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Here and your soul shall live. I mean, he says, if you want to know what life and satisfaction looks like, well, certainly then you can, uh, you, you can come to him and he will show you that he always desires to have our lives filled up with the goodness of God. And oftentimes we also recognize, just like in Psalm 2, he asked these, uh, I mean Psalm 1, he says, blessed or happy. So back to this beatitude issue, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. He says you're 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 not going to be you're not going to be blessed if you're walking in the ways and the wisdoms of the world. You're going to come up empty. You're not going to you're not going to have that full joy of the Lord that He promises. But He says, verse two, but His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in His law does He meditate day and night. And he says, when you come to Me and you meditate upon My word, there are going to be some tremendous things that are going to take place. And we see, he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. In other words, we never run out of that wonderful moisture. We're not, we're not, uh, we're not in a parched, dry land. God has planted us uh, where we never will uh, a thirst again. And he says, and not only that, but he says he'll bring forth his fruit in his season. And that's what God wants to do in our lives is bring forth fruit and, uh, unto righteousness and godliness and holiness. And he says, and his leaves shall never wither, and whatsoever he do, he shall prosper. I mean, isn't that the desire of every human heart, that everything that we do, everything that we, we go about, we can prosper with? Not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, on every level. And it's, we're, we're always starving or hungering for one or the other in life if we're running after the things of the world. But I love it because Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Blessed are they. Happy are they, full are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. And we run ourselves to death trying to find the things of the world and, 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 they, and they never come about. And um, in, uh, in, in Matthew chapter 6, he said these words. He said, uh, he said, take no thought, therefore, what you shall eat or what you shall drink or what you shall clothe yourself with. 
For after all these things the Gentiles seek. And he says, so all these things you're running and killing yourself over, um, God longs to just pour a blessings out on his children. He says, your heavenly father knows you have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He says, you're killing yourself for them, and your heavenly father wants to give them to you. He's the one who can provide all things according to his riches and glory. And so I pray today that as you go forth and as you as you seek to work and to make a living, that you don't miss out on what's going to bring all that to its full tuition, uh, that you're not here uh, to make a living. You're here to live the life that God has appointed for you. And it won't matter if you make all the money in the world and don't have a relationship with the Lord like you should. It'll feel empty and void and vainless. You'll be hungry and you'll be thirsty. But he says, blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So what a glorious blessing we have today to go forth and know that God has all that we need and we can be satisfied. So go forth, mighty in the name of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and be encouraged.